What's up guys, it's Ed back again from TechSource and welcome to the build guide of Vaporeon, the $450 gaming PC for December. If you missed out on what this baby can do, make sure to check out the gaming and benchmarks video by clicking on the card on the top right. So all you need for this build is a screwdriver and of course the parts itself. I've linked everything I used down below and I even included some optional parts that are compatible with the build like a CPU cooler, an SSD, and even alternate options on graphics cards in case you guys have a little more or a little less to spend. So step one is to lay your PC case down and unwrap the cables and remove the box of screws attached to the drive bay. Take out your motherboard and slide open the lever. Then take your CPU with the pins facing downwards and match the triangle on the sockets to the gold triangle on your CPU. Once you have figured out which direction is correct, gently place the CPU down while not applying any force and make sure not to touch the surface of the CPU. If you do, you will need to wipe off your fingerprint. Use 75% or greater isopropyl and a tissue or lint-free cloth like a coffee filter. If you don't have any, you can use tissue or toilet paper, just make sure to blow off the remaining lint off of the CPU if there are any. If the CPU doesn't rest in place, you may need to wiggle it around a little bit for it to fall in place, but after that, go ahead and lower the lever and lock it in place. Next step is to install the RAM sticks. Go ahead and release the locks off of each slot that you're installing. There is one on each side. If you're installing four sticks, then put one in each slot. Now, if you're going dual channel, AKA have two RAM sticks, then install them in the gray slots that you see in the video. Make sure to align the notches on the RAM sticks with the notches on the RAM slots. Gently lower the RAM sticks evenly and apply pressure on both sides at the same time in order to snap it in place. Repeat the same process for all the RAM sticks. If you installed it correctly, the locks should be fully seated inside of the RAM. Now it's time for the CPU cooler. Depending on what cooler you are installing, make sure to follow the instructions listed on the manual. If you're installing the stock cooler like in the video, then follow these steps. First, position the cooler in the orientation you want. What I usually do is I make sure to have the least cable slack as possible for a cleaner wiring job. So since the CPU fan header is right next to the cooler, I don't need that much cable slack. So I basically wrapped it around the cooler so that only a few inches of cable slack is visible and this is the orientation I'm going to install the fan. You will need to align the hooks from the motherboard to the brackets on the cooler. Don't worry about applying thermal paste since it already comes pre-applied with some. So once you figure out your orientation of the cooler, slowly lower it until it comes in contact with the CPU. Try not to move the cooler as you hook up both sides, starting from the side that doesn't have the lever. Rotate the motherboard to the other side and do the exact same, but afterwards make sure to lock it in place using the black lever. It should snap in place if you do it correctly. Lastly, connect the cooler to the motherboard CPU fan header which should be colored white. You are now ready to install the IO shield and the standoffs in the case. Make sure the shield has the three circle cutouts on the bottom and snap it in place on the back of your PC. Make sure all four sides of the shield sits flush against your PC. Now let's install the standoffs. You will need eight of these screws that came with the case and you need to install them in these exact locations. Once they are nicely tightened, go ahead and gently lower the motherboard in while avoiding bumping into the case and trying to match the cutouts of the IO shield with the motherboard ports. You will then need eight of these black screws and you can begin screwing in the motherboard. As always, I recommend a crisscross pattern while tightening the screws and please don't over tighten them. Only get them to a point where it's comfortable, as in use a screwdriver with your fingers and not your entire hand, if that makes any sense. You don't want to apply too much pressure on the motherboard, which can damage it. Next up, it's time to install the power supply. Lay down your case and insert the power supply with the fan facing downwards on the top cutout of your case. You will need four of these to screw in your power supply. You can use your other hand to push the PSU against the case in order to align the holes if you want to. Next up, we are going to install the hard drive. So go ahead and grab the black SATA cable that came with the motherboard and hook up one end to the back of the hard drive and also grab one SATA power cable from the power supply unit that looks like this and then connect it to the other hard drive slot. Once you do that, position the cables to the right side of the case and make sure that the screw holes of the hard drive are facing towards you. Align the holes and then grab four of these long screws which are needed to secure the hard drive against the rack. Alright, next up, grab the other end of the SATA cable that's hooked up to your hard drive and locate the SATA ports on the motherboard which should be all the way on the bottom right. It doesn't matter which port you connect it to as long as it's from one of the four up top. 
If you have an SSD instead, the process is exactly the same, however this time you will have to use the smaller holes and a smaller round headed screws. For some reason I was blind and didn't realize the other two holes on the bottom, so if you're installing it, make sure all four holes of the SSD align properly. In my case, I should have lowered the SSD a little bit. The process of connecting the cables is exactly the same for the SSD as well. Next up we are connecting the cables that came hooked up with the PC case. First up is the USB 3.0, so grab the cable with the blue tip and connect it to the slot on the motherboard that says USB 30, as in USB 3.0. Make sure you hear it snap in place. Next up is the HD audio. You won't be needing the AC97, so you can go ahead and disregard that. The label for this one is called F Audio for front panel audio, and you can find that all the way on the bottom left of the motherboard. Next cable is the USB, and you can connect this one to either one of the two USB ports near the bottom. Next up are the small set of cables. We're gonna start off with the HDD LED, but remember that the triangle symbol means positive. Flip it face down so that the words HDD LED are facing down, and plug it in the bottom left slot as indicated on the motherboard. Next up is the power LED positive and negative cables. These go on the top. The positive one goes in first and then the negative one right next to it. Next up is the reset switch, however for this one you have to face the white letters up and plug it in next to the HDD LED on the bottom. Last but not least we have the power switch and this one goes right above the reset switch but with the white letters facing down like this. Now that we got the nightmare over with, it's time to hook up the 24 pin power cable to the right side of the motherboard. This one is one of the hardest cables to connect because you will need to apply lots of force in order for it to click in place. Spin the PC case to the back and make sure that the clip is fully hooked over and that there are no gaps between the cable and the socket. The last cable we need to hook up to the motherboard are both of the CPU 4 pin connectors. This one connects to the socket on the top left of the motherboard. Again, make sure to apply a good amount of force to snap these in place. It's important that these are fully connected. So now we are ready to install the graphics card. So go ahead and remove the top two white PCIe brackets near the back and carefully slide in the GPU in the case. Once the GPU is inside the case, go ahead and snap it in place. Make sure to install it on the very first PCIe slot for optimal performance. Lastly, we need to hook up both of the PCIe cables to power up the GPU. Make sure that the words PCIe are facing up and just connect them one by one to the GPU. That's it, you are done with part one. Take this time to make sure all of the cables are connected and that there are no loose connections or cables hanging around. Also, if you're adding extra fans, make sure to connect the fan cable to any fan header on the motherboard. Now we're going to install a fresh copy of Windows 8.1 and you guys can upgrade to Windows 10 for free later on, so don't worry about that for now. If you want to use your current hard drive or SSD, then you don't need this step. Just plug it in like we did before in the video and you are good to go. For everyone else, here's what you need to do. Grab Grab a flash drive with at least 16GB of space and plug it into your computer. Then you need to download the installation media from the Microsoft site, I did leave a link down below for you guys. Once you are here, click on create media and it will begin downloading. Once it completes the download, open up the folder and run the program. Pick your language, the edition and architecture, everything should match with mine unless you have a different language. Click next and choose your USB drive. Click on next to move on, a prompt should appear stating that the files will be deleted. Make sure you don't have anything important in them before you continue. Click on ok to proceed. This should take some time to download depending on the speed, but once it's complete, it will automatically install the operating system to the USB drive. This can take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, so please be patient. Once it's complete, you will get this message stating that your USB drive is ready. You guys will need a Windows 8.1 CD key to continue. You can get one on your own, or you can get it for much cheaper using the Reddit CD key swapper, and I'll drop a link in the description section for the thread. Right now they go anywhere from $25 to $40, which is dirt cheap, but wherever you guys pick it up from, make sure to buy the 8.1 Pro Edition and not the standard since that's the version we installed on the flash drive. Once you have your CD key, we are ready to install Windows on the PC. So go ahead and insert the USB drive in the front of the PC and boot it up. It will detect the USB drive and it will take you straight to the setup screen. Now if it doesn't, then that means the PC did not detect your flash drive. So go ahead and hit Ctrl Alt Delete to restart your PC and hit the delete key continuously until you get to the BIOS screen. Navigate to the BIOS features tab up top and then go down and click on drive priorities. 
Next, go ahead and click on either one of the boot options, and if you don't see USB flash drive listed on here, then that means you didn't connect something the right way. Make sure both of the USB cables are hooked up to the right parts on the motherboard. In the meantime, you can use another USB port on your PC, preferably any one of them in the back. Once you swap the USB ports, exit out of BIOS by restarting the PC, and it will take you to the installation part of Windows, and then it will ask you to enter the CD key. So go ahead and enter in the CD key that you purchased here and then click next. When you get to the screen, click on custom and then select which partition you want to install Windows on if you have two. Otherwise, leave it on default and click on next. Let Windows install the files onto your PC and once it's complete, you will get this message. Remove the flash drive and click on OK to restart the PC. Once Windows finishes the installation process, you will reach this screen. Go ahead and follow the prompt and finish filling out your info. Once you reach the desktop, it's time to download the drivers. Now, if you're connecting your PC via Ethernet cable, then you don't need a wireless adapter. But if you want to connect your PC via Wi-Fi, then you need to purchase this wireless adapter. This one costs only 10 bucks, and I'll go ahead and drop a link down below for you. Just insert it in the USB port, and it will automatically give your PC internet access via Wi-Fi. Once you reach your desktop, it's time to install the drivers. You will need to visit Gigabyte to download them. So you'll need to download the Realtek Audio, AMD chipset, and Realtek LAN. I left a link in the description section so it's easier for you guys to find it. After you download and install those, it's time to install the graphics card drivers. Again, I left a link to the website. Just go there and download the Radeon software. Once you have downloaded the files and installed them on your computer, you are complete. Congratulations, you have a fully functional gaming and productivity PC. If you guys enjoyed this video or if it was very helpful, please hit that like button as it does help out a lot and I'll continue to do these builds for my budget gaming PCs each month. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.